So our SQLite functionality is set up. We have added the packages that are required to all of our projects. And we have now from both Android and iOS set where in each of those platforms is the database file eventually going to be located. Now we should be ready to start saving new elements. But of course, before doing that, we have to somehow define the tables and well, just one table in this case, but we should also define the columns for that table. Now, like I said, the functionality that the packages come with is going to set up that very easily. But we do have to set how is this going to be translated into C sharp. Basically, we need to define a C sharp class that will eventually be used by the package that we imported to create a table and create its columns. And this is actually going to be the class that we use to create objects from it that eventually are going to be entries in the table. So let's go ahead and do that in this lecture. And we're going to be basing that class in the entries that we have here. So each of the entries that we have in the main page is going to be eventually one of the columns. So this is going to be pretty much the model of our contact. So let me just right click on the contacts project, the one that is shared, and first add a new folder. Let me just have some structure here with my folders and call this classes. And inside of the classes folder, I am going to add a new file and I am going to search for the empty class template. This is going to be, this is of course going to be a C sharp class on windows. By the way, you have the ability to add a class right away by right clicking on the folder, selecting add, and there you have a class option. Either way, we are going to be calling this contact and the new contact class is going to be quickly created. All we have to do here on the contact class is define its properties. Again, one property for each of the entries that we're going to have. So for example, we're going to have a name property. And by the way, to quickly create properties, all we have to do is write prop. Notice that you see a template for a short property being listed in here. Simply type tab twice and you will have this property very quickly created. We first need to set the type of the property. This is going to be string and its name, which is going to be name. And we're going to do the same thing for the last name, for the email, for the phone number and for the address. So five elements, we are going to be needing one for each of them. And the fact that we're going to be using databases requires an ID. So we need to establish an ID. In the case of SQLite, that ID will have to be an integer. So I'm going to be defining an int element that is going to be ID. This is how we're going to be defining the model of the contact. Basically, it's going to require one property for each of the elements that we need for the contact. And of course, eventually each of these are going to be translated into a column inside of the contact table. It is also going to be requiring the ID for it to be the primary key, which by the way, we should establish with a SQLite attribute. So SQLite attributes are going to help the SQLite package understand how are these going to be created when we define the table or where when the package creates the table. For example, if we define the ID as the primary key, which by the way requires us to add a using directive to the SQLite namespace, the table when it is created will know that the ID has to always be unique. And in fact, we can set this to auto increment itself. So maybe the first time we insert something, it is going to be a zero and the next time it is going to be one and so on and so forth. 
And there are many attributes that you could use, for example, for the phone number, you could use something like the max length. And in parentheses, that is the value, let's say that for a phone number, the max length is going to be 10. And, you know, there are many other attributes that you could use. Let's, for example, you could in, in case you want the table to be named different than the name of the class, you could use an attribute for the class, the entire class as well, which would be the table attribute and in parentheses, you could establish the name. So in case you wanted the name of the table to be different than the name of the class, you would establish it here and the name of the class would be ignored. The name that you establish here is the one that to be used. And the same with properties is if you wanted it to not be last name, you would use the column attributes and inside of the double quotes set the actual name that you want inside of the table for the column instead of the name of the property. I am not going to be focusing a lot on all of the attributes that you can set. These are the ones that we're going to need. Nothing else is really necessary. But now we actually have the model, how the table is going to look like. So that means that we are good to go to start creating new contact objects from that class with the help of whatever is written inside of these entries and insert them into the database.